Hey guys, so today's video is going to be October favorites and I'm really excited about this video because I have so many things to show you guys. I've had a little stockpile of products on the corner of my vanity for a few weeks now and just a lot of new things. Um, things that I haven't, for one reason or another, just haven't had a chance to include in other videos or tutorials. So I'm going to be showing you all of those products today. So let's kick it off by talking about foundation. So as you guys know, I have been using the Dior Air Flash Spray Foundation a lot over the past few weeks, and I do have a review and demo on this product, but another foundation that I've kind of been sneakily testing on the side has been the Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay in Place Makeup. It's a bit different from the Dior foundation. I mean, this one definitely brings the matte, full coverage realness to the table because it is just perfectly flawless. It's kind of a fine line between applying too much. I mean, it can get a little heavy because it is such full coverage, but it does not budge. I mean, this stuff stays in place all day long, all night, and it's really the only foundation that I've tried that I can really say looks exactly the same at the end of the night as when I first applied it. Another thing I notice is the way that it makes the rest of my makeup look. It kind of, um, I don't know, it's almost like the rest of my face products, like my bronzer and blush and stuff, just show up so much more true to color and it kind of sticks onto the foundation in a way that it just doesn't fade. I've noticed my blush and everything just hasn't been fading as much and it just looks so nice all day long. The sense of it reminds me exactly of the Studio Fix Fluid by MAC and the formula reminds me of that one as well. So I really do like this a lot. I think the shade might be just a scotch light for me so I might go back and try to you know get another shade to mix with it but so far loving the Estee Lauder double wear stay in place makeup. I also have a few false lashes to show you guys. Um, the ones that I have on today are the bombshell set by House of Lashes and they're really really pretty. I just threw them on today. I'd never worn them before. They're a little bit longer in the center so they give more of like a wide-eyed doe-eyed look and um, the ones that I really really wanted to show you though are these. They are called Tigris or no Tigris. They are so long and glam looking but they're really wispy so they're not really really thick super easy to apply because the band is like the perfect perfect thickness I would say they're like the demi wispies more refined sophisticated cousin because you can really wear these anytime similar to a demi wispy look they just work with everything but they're just a little bit more refined like they're just longer and more delicate looking almost they're beautiful beautiful lashes I don't know if you can tell but in the outer corners they're a little bit thicker like they're kind of doubled up on the outer edges Love, love, love these. So again, the Tiger set by House of Lashes. The next thing that I wanted to mention is more of just a trend or a certain look versus, you know, a specific product. Um, but with all these dark lip colors and dark eye looks that I've been wearing lately, I just feel like I haven't been wearing a lot of blush. So what I've been doing lately is more of just like a nude cheek where I kind of, you know, most days I will just save the pink blushes and all that and I'll just kind of stack my bronzer and I'll do my bronzer and then blend that up into where I would normally place my blush. So what I've been doing for that is using my trusty MAC Mineralize Skin Finish in Gimme Sun and again I just kind of use it as my bronzer and my blush and then I use a little bit of my MAC Mineralize Skin Finish in Soft and Gentle just right on top just on the cheekbones and pretty much nowhere else on the face just for a little something something on the cheekbones a little bit of a glow and it just sets off the rest of my makeup so nicely and it just doesn't compete with the other colors I'm wearing like you know a pink blush wood or something if I do wear blush I'll just go for a natural color this is the benefit rockateur which I have been obsessed with lately that one is really <laughs> smells really good this one is a really natural color but it does have some pink to it so I'll show you a swatch of that in a second and then of course my NARS luster blush I've shown this one a million times but you can see what I mean it's not a specific color so much as it is just a warmth to the skin so this one's really pretty too so that one is the Benefit Rockateur, and that is NARS Luster Blush. One thing that has not left my vanity since I got it is um, my Z palette, and I actually have it filled with some Makeup Geek eyeshadows. And um, these are a lot of the neutral eyeshadows, and I have just been using these non-stop. I can't even tell you, like, all of them are, I mean, there's just so many amazing neutrals in the range and there's so many mattes and satin finishes. My favorite colors have definitely been from this 
section and I'm wearing a bunch of them on my eyes today. So this one is Vanilla Bean which is just a really nice satin uh, creamy color. This one is Shima Shima and I'm wearing that on my inner corner today and this is the most shimmery iridescent highlight shade. Well it's not so much iridescent, it's just very very high shimmer. It's beautiful. And then Creme Brulee. This is almost like similar to a soft brown or something by MAC. I'm wearing that in my crease today and then I think I deepened it with this color here called Frappe. And then this one up here called Cocoa Bear is amazing. It's like almost like a Swiss chocolatey type of color. They're just all so pigmented and the one thing now that I have eyeshadows all over my fingers. I don't know what to do. Okay. And one thing that I will definitely say about these shadows is that they are so insanely blendable. It's not even funny. They are just uh, so easy to work with. Pretty much using this palette every single day. And uh, before I show you swatches, I do want to mention this palette because it is a Z palette. It's the first one that I have ever had. And I really like it a lot, especially because it has this clear front. So you can see all of your colors, which is nice. I mean, regardless of what you have in here, you can deep your powders and blushes and other eyeshadows and put them in here um, but I mean half the fun of having makeup is being able to look at it right so here's a swatch of vanilla bean which isn't gonna show up a lot on my hand because I'm so fair but it's a great color for your eyes and then there is shimmer shimmer you can see how gorgeous and shimmery that one is this is creme brulee and then frappe is just a touch darker these all kind of look the same on camera but I promise they're totally different this one's kind of like saddle by Mac and then and that is the darkest one, Cocoa Bear. So I'm sure a lot of you guys knew this one was coming. Uh, my Anastasia Beverly Hills Lavish Palette, which is really cool because it's a different kind of design. It's not really your typical palette. It comes in a box like this, and then it has a really big mirror on the inside, which is always nice. And then the actual eyeshadows come out, so it's kind of like a little painter's palette almost. I don't know. I just thought this was really cool. And then you also get a bunch of goodies in there, too. You get, like, the biggest pair of tweezers I've ever seen in my life and some eyeliners and a brush. They're just kind of tucked in there. These two colors make perfect transition shades, orange soda and sienna, and you can even mix them together and just apply them to the brow bones. That's usually what I do, but it's nice because they're not just your typical, you know, neutral brown matte eyeshadows. They're a little bit more seasonal. This one's more of like a rusty reddish brown, and then you can pretty much apply any of the other colors on your lid and you're good to go, so it's just a really easy way to use this palette. There's tons of other ways to combine the colors of course but that's what I've been doing so you have like a burgundy here a green and this one is really gorgeous with these two colors and like a copper and this gunmetal gray and this one is kind of like a cranberry shade down here I seriously think biscuit thinks that I like bought that vanity table for her exclusively because it has become her official chillin nap spot <laughs> I have a bunch of new brushes to show you guys these are newly launched from Sigma Beauty, and I had honestly been wishing that Sigma would come out with something like this for the longest time. I was so happy when I saw that they did because they're kind of like these little squat, almost like kabuki style brushes for your eyes, which are so great because not only can you place the color with this, you can also blend it out as well. And I'm definitely going to be using them a lot in tutorials so you guys can see how I use them and stuff. Uh, this one is the All Over Blend E37. This one is pretty stiff. And then this one is the E38 Diffused Crease Brush. It's almost like a minier version of the E40. And then this one is the Buff and Blend E39, just a little bit smaller. And then this one is cool. This is from the Color Pay off kit it's the firm blender e44 so you can see it's kind of tapered but it's just a great shape because you can really place like darker crease colors and then blend them with the tapered edge okay so let's move on to the part of the video that I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for because I've been seeing your tweets saying Ali where's your favorites video I need some lippy recommendations so I got you so I want to talk about these beauty addicts lip glosses for a second and the first thing that drew me to these but you can tell is the color selection because, I mean, hello, these are definitely my type of shades when I'm not wearing this type of color. I love these lighter, like, candy color glosses, and uh, the color is so opaque, and they're just really, really creamy, and they smell amazing. They smell like, do you guys remember those cupcake dolls? Some of my 90s kids might know what I'm talking about. But they were like these plastic cupcakes that would fold out into a doll, and then the frosting would become the doll's hat. But anyway, they smelled so, so good. They smelled like cupcakes, and that's exactly what these smell like. Totally took me back when I opened these. I was like, oh my gosh, it's my childhood in a tube. This one is called Tease. It's almost like a purpley pink, kind of similar to Snob Lip Glass by MAC. This one is called Naked, and it's almost 
just like a concealer lip type of look. It's a very, very pale peach or just a nude color. Definitely a great one for my nude lip girls out there. And then this one's called Pin Up, just like a bubblegum pink. This one is Tease Naked and then Pin Up over here. So gorge. How typical of me, I have MAC lipsticks and Milani to show you. So this one by Milani is called Uptown Mauve or Move or however you say it. But it's like a cranberry color and when I first got it I thought, ooh, don't think I'm going to use this one very often because I just wanted it to be a little bit darker. But of course it's been the one that I've been wearing the most this month. So I discovered it's just a really great cranberry color and it's really nice to mix with other lipsticks. I've been mixing it with reds, with other berry shades, but it's also just really gorgeous on its own. So I love that one. And then this one is Ruby Woo by MAC. This is a matte finish and this is the one that I'm wearing today. Um, it's a little bit drying like... Just sitting here doing this video, I have the sudden urge to apply some chapstick, but it's such a pretty color <laughs> that I can forgive it because it's just a really timeless red. And then this one is called Rebel, and it is a beautiful vampy burgundy. No, it's not really a burgundy. I would say it's just a very, very deep berry. And actually, when you swatch it out, it doesn't look quite as dark. It's actually kind of similar to Uptown Mauve or mauve, whatever it is, <laughs> but it's just a little bit richer. That is Milani Uptown Mauve and Ruby Woo, which looks kind of orange, but it's not. It's definitely like a cooler red, and then that is Rebel by MAC. So that is a wrap for my October favorites. Thank you guys so much, as always, for just taking the time to watch and checking out this video. I hope you liked it, and I love you guys, and I will see you in my next one. Bye! <laughs>